Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Rosenbaum. I'm a graduate student over at the Media Lab here at MIT. Um, and I'm part of a research group called the Lifelong Kindergarten. Um, I have to apologize in advance. I'm having kind of a weird day involving um, the fact that I can't really hear so well due to congestion. So um, you might say something negative or positive, and I'll have no idea. So sorry about that. So anyway, if you're going to heckle, basically do it loudly is my point there. Um, so OK, I want to show you uh, so a couple of the music-related projects that I'm working on. Um, this one. Uh, on the screen here is called Melody Morph. Sorry, it's upside down. Um, basically, it was a choice between that and a lot of glare. So I guess we got, we got what we got. Um, so I'll show you the basic features of it, and then we're going to do a little performance. Uh, it's me and David Robert, who's here, joining. So, uh-oh. I want to use the, the iPad, but the microphone's over here. I didn't think of that. Just a moment. Okay, so uh, the app that I'm working on is called Melody Morph, and it's about a new way of making music by constructing uh, musical instruments on the screen. So basically I have this palette up at the top, and I have these objects that um, I can tap to play notes, and there are different colors for different pitches. I can play chords, of course. Um, and you've got the full scale here, and then I can go up an octave and down. And you can see that the colors for the same note uh, in different octaves are, it's like the same hue, but like a different lightness. So there's a kind of color language. There's also a, a shape language. So I have um, the triangles or the vibraphone there, but say the piano notes, for example, are circles. So one of the other features is that I can sort of strum. So if I hold down this button here on the side, I can slide across. So it's beginning to have that instrument-like quality. Um, but another thing that I can do is use it, instead of building a spatial arrangement like a piano or a guitar or something, I can use it to build up a, a melody. So here, for example, is a melody in a ring. Um, so if I play it around the circle, sometimes melodies have like a circular or cyclic quality to them, the way that we hear and understand them, but you don't um, normally get to do that the way you notate or represent them. So this is a way that kind of combines the spatial representation with the want also, that you want also with playability of it. Um, so I'll just show you a couple other quick examples. Um, so this one um, is just a particular minor scale, but laid out in a funny shape that I think leads to interesting sort of explorations through it. Musical instruments are kind of landscapes of possibilities, and this lets you, normally they're totally fixed, and this lets you invent totally new ones. Um, there's another feature I didn't show you yet, which lets you uh, record a, a pattern and then play it back. So I tap this thing in the corner here, and then tap it again, and now I have this object, which I can tap to play back the pattern. Uh, and when we perform, you'll see a few more of those in use. Also, there's this brand new thing that I just added, uh, like a few days ago, so it might break. But basically, I hold down this thing, and then I can trace a path through what I made, and then tap that to play back the path. Uh, and then those can also trigger themselves. So you can make infinite loops, and they can trigger each other, too. So there's some algorithm-like qualities of that, which I haven't really even started exploring, because it just started working a few days ago. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, 
Well, oh. <coughs> uh, <coughs> just one more <coughs> uh, benchmark that I got to recently was I was able to do this. Jackson benchmark. Um, <coughs> um, cool. So I'd like to invite David Robert up now to jam out with me a little bit, and we'll have to set up for a second here. Um, <coughs> so. So I'm really putting them on the spot by trying this out here. It's, a, it's like software that's changing and compositions that are changing. So uh, we're kind of improvising to some degree here. Um, David, by the way, is another Media Lab student from uh, the Tangible Media Group. Time, obviously, um, and as you can see, we we constructed a spatial representation of the song where um, the melody and the bass line and the chords are all combined in each of the um, three main sections, and that's one copy of it that we played through uh, in the melody section. And then here is a different kind of thing that we used to improvise over it. So each of the columns is one of the four bar phrases, or well. Anyway, one of the phrases of the melody, and in that column is just the notes uh, that you want to use to um, play in that over that chord. Uh, and then I've also circled the the root notes of each of those chords to make it easier when you're improvising. Uh, so we've got one more for you, <laughs> um, and we hope you like it. Thank you. 
was interesting. Um, cool. Thanks for your help there. Uh, and thank you once again, David Robert. Awesome. Um, so, um, yeah, how about that? Experimenting on C++ code that I last updated only a few hours ago. It's pretty, uh, pretty bold, but it didn't crash even once. That's good. Um, and now, for something completely different, um, I'll, I'll just have to make this part quick, I guess. Um, has anybody seen one of these before? No? Yes? Okay. My two friends have. Cool. Um, Hold it in front of the camera. Hold it in front of the camera. The other camera. So, um, this is the Makey Makey. Um, it's an invention kit that I designed uh, at the Media Lab with all, along with another student named Jay Silver. And the idea is that it lets you make anything into a key. So make, key, makey. Um, and I'm just going to give you a little live demo of it. Um, so rather than launching into a whole explanation, um, I am going to just quickly set it up. Um, so it's a USB device. Dear, 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 dear. Um, so I just uh, kind of plug it in to my laptop, like, like any other little device here. And um, the thing is, uh, the computer thinks it's a, key a keyboard, but you have to make your own keys. And so it's labeled on the front here with um, obviously like the NES direction pad, up, down, left, right. Those represent the arrow keys. And then it says space and click. And what I do is I complete a circuit between the bottom part, which says Earth on it, and any of those areas. And a button will light up. And then also the computer does something. So actually, I pressed click just there. And that was because it thought um, I had clicked the mouse. It also can pretend to be a mouse in addition to a keyboard. Or I can like, um, you know, uh, press the space bar in that little search area. You could see the cursor moving there, I guess. So it pretends a mouse, it's a mouse and keyboard. Um, oh, I didn't mean to search that. Huh. Oops. OK. So, OK. So I can press keys with this thing. Why would I want to do that? Well, it's not just about using it with your fingers on the front of it. You can also use these alligator clips and connect other things to make keys out of them. And so one of the things that I can do is hook up some software that responds to the keys by making sounds. So this thing is called Soundplant. It was made in, anybody remember, Macromedia Director? That's not even that retro in this room, is it? That's funny. OK. Um, I think it's pretty retro. So this thing um, just lets you drag and drop sound files onto a picture of the keyboard. And so when I press like the up arrow, it's playing, right? I can't hear a thing. OK. <laughs> cool. Um, so now I'll plug the alligator clip into the up arrow. So now when I like touch those together, it works. But I can also put them between my fingers and trigger it like that. So what I'd like to do now is ask for uh, a few volunteers. How about three people that are willing to be turned into a human synthesizer musical instrument? Um, just come on down. And then, additionally, is there anyone, is there a percussionist in the house? Anyone that thinks of themselves as a drummer in any capacity? Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Are, you, are you a drummer? I can, I can make, I can, I can get buttons. <laughs> yes. OK, you press <laughs> buttons to play drums. Now yes. you're going to press people. Cool. OK, so we're going to give you um, this one, your ground or earth. So okay. you just hold that between your fingers. OK, and then. We'll test it out with, uh, with you. So you just need to hold the middle part of this one between two fingers and then hold up the other hand. And then if you guys high five. <laughs> OK. <laughs> it's working. Great. OK, so do you want to be, oh, yeah, actually, if you move your feet enough, like if you lift up him, though, oh. that's another way to trigger it, as it turns out. Uh, physics. I don't really know why. <laughs> um, so now, all right, you're going to be Kick drum. So just hold the middle part of that between your fingers. Give him a, a try there. 
yeah, uh, I, hear it. I hear it. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to switch the audio. That's why it's quiet. Sorry. Uh, sound person. Can we uh, test it out? No, no, there's no, no sound. sound. It's not working. No sound's coming out at all. No sound. Yeah. Keep on making a sound. All right, here we go. There we go. Yeah. I can hear that. <laughs> okay. Um, and I will be, uh, I'll be a uh, uh, clap. Appreciate it, guys. Okay, so um, I'm going to play for you uh, the video now um, that kind of introduces the bigger picture of the project and shows some more examples of what you can do with it. Um, hope the audio level is going to be okay on this. So it's about making anything into a key. So instead of playing your, pressing your boring old space bar, you plug a banana. <laughs> In, and now you have a banana space bar, obviously. Um, you can play Mario Brothers with your keyboard or get some Play-Doh, plug that into the Makey Makey, and now you've got your own working Nintendo controller made of Play-Doh. It's a little squishier, but it works. Um, you can play Pac-Man with the arrow keys, of course, or, and this is just regular pencil on paper, you draw your own game controller, and now you can touch the drawing to play Pac-Man. Here, we're filling some buckets of water in order to play Dance Dance Revolution. It's a little more difficult to play in this fashion. <laughs> this took a lot of tries, as you can imagine. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, so here, we've rigged up a piano that you play with the computer keyboard to the stairs. The banana piano, of course. The human synthesizer, as you just saw, works with babies. Um, here, the cat sits on the foil, and as soon as it drinks from the water bowl, that completes the circuit, pressing the button on photo booth to take a picture of itself. Uh, and here, we have some just ordinary alphabet soup, and we can use it to type. So uh, notice that there are um, carrots being used as the space bar in that particular case. Um, so that's the Makey Makey project. Um, we did a Kickstarter campaign for it about a year ago. It was very exciting, kind of took off, and we've got tens of thousands of the kits out in the world now. Uh, and so just the last thing I wanted to share with you is uh, a few videos of um, musical things that people are doing with it. Obviously, there's a whole variety of things, but since I'm focusing on music today. Um, and so I started downloading some of the examples of YouTube videos that people are making um, from YouTube, and I, I ended up with, let's see, uh, all of these, these are just the cool ones that are music ones. There's like 30 of them, so I'm not going to obviously show you all of these, but let's just pick a couple. Um, uh, actually, okay. This is something that I've been playing around with. So this is not a From the Wild example, but from the Media Lab. Um, So that's um, conductive paint that I'm playing with there. And probably from what you just saw with Melody Morph, the app, 
you can see that there's kind of a relationship, not a coincidence. I'm playing around with spatial musical representations that you can play by touching them. Uh, and this particular painting I actually planned out using Melimorph and then made out of conductive paint. Um, so let's look at some other weird stuff people are doing. So this, this is a kind of classic example. I see lots of these. This one has somewhat better musicianship than the typical one, I guess. But um, So those are, those are what, like, pieces of lemon and tomatoes. Pretty cool. Um, and um, it was really exciting actually to see this one, which has somewhat higher production. This one has somewhat higher production values. Um, and it's actually a cover of an entire song, as you'll see. Hi hats. Bells. Alright, let's go. I'll just skip ahead a little bit. <laughs> oh, I love that idea. So he's got a carrot on the phonograph turntable. It's hitting these wires that are sticking up, and that triggers the hi-hat sound. So the grapes. I love how the mushrooms sound here. It's an awesome track. He actually covers this entire Massive Attack song called Teardrop using the vegetables, but you can watch the rest of that at home. Um, here is a crucial uh, research result, actually. I didn't know until I saw this one that um, uh, gummy worms are electrically uh, conductive. And quite musical, too, actually. Um, so that's. Uh, and then this one is, uh, this is again from me here at the lab. <coughs> and <clears throat> I, I've actually been buying like most of the supermarket's supply of those foil like pie plate things because it turns out they work really well with Makey Makey. Um, so this is just a pie plate with some tape on it. And here's what we did. So you can see the, the spatial pattern of the tape on there gives you a pattern in time, a kind of rhythm as you slide your, your finger across it. So that's been really fun to experiment with. Um, so here's, oh, here's a pretty non-obvious uh, music with people example. Um, I got an email from these guys, they're in Holland, um, and they're apparently Holland's most popular uh, Dutch language band, and they've been doing it for a couple decades, so I guess their audience is kids that are losing their hair, maybe, so they invite uh, all people to come to the stage. Uh, I'm not really doesn't like to be hit on the head. 
Applaus, jongens. Waar ze weg bij haar. Thuis lig ik nog. It's wacky and fun. Just a minute here. Oh yeah. So, last one. This is the uh, winning entry in a college talent show. Eating the national anthem. Thank you. That's a little bit of the Melody Morph and Makey Makey projects. Thank you.